y a todos quienes nos siguen. Good morning este... to all of you, to all of those who are following us in the second meeting of the International Seminar of Venezuelan Struggles, Colonial Past, uh, Revolutionary Legacy, and uh, Community Regeneration. As we said in the beginning, this is a, a seminar that is going to be told by the main actors of the Bolivarian Revolution from the grassroots organizations, from the social movement, from the communes, from the intellectual um, spheres who are committed with our struggles. We have organized this seminars with uh, the Simon Bolivar Institute for Peace and Solidarity, with uh, Alba TV, uh, also with the support of the Ecological Green Ground Center in China, the Regional Alliance of Asia and the People of Asia. And in the second meeting, we, well, just uh, for you to remember that we started last week, we had Hernando uh, Iturriza's um, participation. He told us about uh, the origin of the Bolivarian Revolution and the construction of Chavismo political concept. Today, we will tackle the second subject of the seminar. We're going to have two different parts of today's meeting. First, we will address the rural commune, the um, coordination of uh, communes and socialist cities. And um, we will have friends of some of the Venezuelan communes who are going to tell us about this. We will have our friends from the Maizal commune, and, uh, which is in the latter state, and the Pequevara commune, which is located in the state of Merida. Both the regions are located at the um, western side of our country. So today we will have a conversation with them, and uh, our friends from China, Sweet Set and uh, Zhen Xinxian, they are going to help us today in the coordination of this meeting. Okay, so before we give the floor to our friends from El Maizal commune, we're pretty grateful for them as they're here today, and we are starting the harvest of corn. And in El Maizal commune, uh, they grow uh, Born, and I know that they have been pretty busy. So thank you very much for being here today. So before we start our presentations, as I said, you will have 40 minutes to do your presentation, and after that, we will have a Q&A session. And I would like to ask all participants to write their questions through the chat and uh, to answer them later. But um, I just wanted to remind you some of the data that we gave last uh, week, last session. Last week, we talked about how in Venezuela, the participation process has been at the center of all of our endeavors. This was one of the most important ideas of Dr. Ichiriza's explanation and how in constructing Chavismo, the new vision of the political individual that has a different approach, which is no longer considered as a subordinated class. On the contrary, it is viewed as a subject, an active subject. So with this approach, participation has a new meaning because that individual is the one who's going to build new policies in Venezuela. Uh, we have been working in the Venezuela, bearing in mind this concept through the people's participation. We have been able to regulate the land ownership. We have made great progress in education in primary, secondary school. We have uh, provided access to water for millions of people, access to electricity, access to gas, access to ITC. But uh, besides from that, 
Thanks to this organization, Venezuela has been able to resist, to be resilient in the face of a very hard crisis, mainly during the last years due to the blockade imposed by the U.S. administration. So, President Chavez proposed at the heart of communal councils in 2005, he said that communal councils were cells in which the different kinds of grassroots and committees that were dealing with the telecommunication, education, water, um, education, sanitation problems were to start working and to start a self-governance of their territories. Today, we have 47,000 communal councils that are located in rural areas and in the cities. And um, ever since this communal councils have been set up, we have been working in the, the remounting of roofs, street, um, building, we have been building houses, and many other services as well. And President Chavez said in 2007 that the commune was to be the, was to be the tribe of the whole process so that the whole territory could work in coordination to exercise self-governance, to find a new productive model, to find cool ways to have uh, planification, production within each territory, and also to exercise new cultural relationships. So with that, we started building the communes, and today, we have uh, more than 3,200 communes that are located in different cities of our country, rural areas. Today, we will start the debate from the rural areas, from the productive sphere, from our country, people of our country who are producing in the midst of this crisis and who have increased their agricultural productivity. We will be talking with all farmers and the way in which they have been organizing themselves. And in the midst of the crisis over the last few they have been exercising the, the, the practices. So today, we'll start with the first dialogue with the El Maizal commune, and then we will talk with the Che Guevara commune. So, as I said, we will start with the Maizal Comune with Elise Matos, which is the responsible of the production of um, like, um, agricultural production of and Maizal, and the coordinator also with the technical and political formation. And Mr. Pineda, who is the sixth person of the Maizal Comune, and the Ramos, who is responsible for the primary production of the Maizal Comune. So, with this brief introduction, I will give now the floor to our friends. I remind all the audience from different places who are following us to support us. Please make your comments, ask your questions, and at the end of this participation, we will have a very fruitful exchange with our friends. I'm very grateful for you to be there. Thank you. Commune or nothing. That's our name. Commune or nothing. Good morning. My name is Joanna. I'm a person of a, my South commune. Greetings to those who are following us. And we are speaking from a my South territory. This is a territory where we have an ongoing project. And from here, we would like to greet all of us who are following us today. We're very grateful. You said that from the beginning, when Commander Chavez in 2005, we started working, but we had already started organizing ourselves as a community council even before that day. And then in March the 5th, 2009, we received a, an award thanks to our work. The production that we did here 
we have uh, 22 Commonwealth councils. 12 are located in the Lara estate. And as I was saying, on March 5th, we wanted to break with that scheme so we wanted to have a new approach without any kind of division. And Commander Chavez gave us the land, 33,000 hectares for production. We have uh, almost 14,000 inhabitants. And uh, we had at the beginning set ourselves a number of projects. We also have the communes, a communes bank. We have a parliament. And in this parliament, we discuss and make decisions. And we also have a communal assembly with a participation of 3,000 inhabitants of our community. And this uh, entity, we propose ideas, approaches to put in place in our territory. We have been working for 11 years and we have been able to set up some companies according to our needs. We have uh, a, a social productive company, communal company, which was, which was created in 2011. Also, a Mora company for the growing of uh, corn. We have uh, Emiliano Zapata company as well. And uh, husbandry company as well. They um, produce milk and other items. We have uh, other companies that process the corn, coffee that is uh, being produced in the territory in which we are working. And um, also have the growing of vegetables. We have also other productive units uh, for live livestock, and the my Santa social productive company, which works with uh, meal and um, other items. So we also have a school, a political, technical, ideological school. We have as well the, a bank, as I said before. And we also have three magazines, three communal magazines. And it's there where our people do their purchases and they um, can buy what we produce. They can buy flour, corn, coffee, Mail, cheese. So this goods are put at the service of our community. We have been working very hard in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of the blockade. So will myself, commune has been getting stronger because Chavez told us to be resilient, and we are following Tavis's heritage. He used to talk about commune or nothing. In March 2009, he said that we had to commit ourselves with the production of our lands for the benefit of our people. He then talked about commune or nothing. And then this is when everything started. The whole 
started. And we are 100% convinced that the only way in which we can build socialism is through the commune or nothing. Greetings, brothers and sisters of the world. Joan Delgado has explained to you the process, the building process, which was uh, the project proposed by President Chavez to attain socialism. We are determined in building our communes. And we said that uh, we explained the local history, what we've been doing. And in our organization, we have been working with those experience. And we want this to, to replicate this experience all over the country. We believe that these communes are the expression of the self-governments. And we know that uh, we need to be united. We need to unite all of our workforces and not work in isolation. This is the idea, so that we attain a unified commune system. And this is possible thanks to the organization of the grassroots, the organization of our people by season the means of production. And we go back to the Samorana struggle. Here, we are not uh, Samoranos because we are in a permanent fight. We understand that if we do not have the means of production in our hands, in the hands of our people, we will not be able to, to move forward. So we have to work in the new ways of uh, social relationship and uh, to be able to provide ourselves the necessary means, the land, for the production, and that that, that uh, production would be in the hands of the people. President Chavez understood the communes in a very clear manner. And this is how we understood the whole process, thanks to this clarity. We need to be permanently struggling to continue our fight. In the territory where we are located, we are going beyond the communal center. We are going to the communal city. We have 12 communes that have been united, and we are already exercising the practice of self-government. In many fields, in production, for instance, we have uh, created the Productive Economy Council. And uh, it is very interesting because uh, we have a broad participation of all the population, and we talk about the economy and we execute our economic plans, which are financed by the Communes Bank. So it's a pretty interesting exercise that we have been practicing here in my South Commune. We also have a policy of the distribution of production through the communal unity, which is a new platform that a lot of us use. We are constantly discovering, as I said, we have recovered the means of production and uh, land that was in the hands of a private sector, that land which was not being worked. And uh, we started our struggle there almost by force. And we have recovered also state companies that have failed in their 
activities which we have recuperated. So this is what we learned and uh, this is what we are determined to do to recuperate, to recover um, uh, factories such as the port factory and the other factories as well. We have also been working in educational initiatives. There are numerous means of production that were at the service of evangelism, and today they are at the service of the people who are organized in the communes. So we are having good results. We have a pretty solid numbers, and we can say that uh, the organized people are much more efficient than. Bueno, también de resaltar que, que o sea, tú haces hincapié en una de las, de las grandes ocupaciones que tenemos ahorita como común es la cosecha de maíz que inició el día de hoy. We have been working mainly with the corn growing in our commune. This is one of the main items of production. Over 10 years of production of corn, we have produced 18 thousand kilograms of corn that have been distributed among the Venezuelan people. So it is a huge task which has which we have been doing as communers and uh, in the midst of a pandemic in the midst of a ferocious blockade we have been able to continue working and we always try to satisfy our population's needs. And uh, we also believe that we need to be hopeful, hopeful to build socialism to the creation of a new man. My partner said that we had recovered many means of uh, production, means of production that were in the hands of the Venezuelan state. So I was said that all those factories that had been abandoned needed to be recovered by the people. So this is what we've been doing. We have recovered those factories, we have recovered those uh, places of production that had been abandoned and we have put them in service of the people. And another thing I would like to say is that we work on the basis of collectivity. We do not practice individualism. Here, there are many men, women, and children who are aware of the fact that are aware of our approach, and they have been receiving training We have lost uh, the sound. We are not getting the, the speaker. They're back. The ten, in, regarding training, as uh, my friend said, the level of uh, awareness, of consciousness, there's been a hard work in the teaching education process in order to form and, to, and to educate our people. We are losing the, the sound. We are not getting them. They are frozen. The territories in the production units the uh, education processes have been very important to ensure the continuity of the project, to be able to succeed with this strategy. Each one of the producers 
they are connected to the action in the territories. There is a the permanent education process in order to ensure that we are able to perform the different tasks at the territorial level. We have created these education modules to insist on education. We are working from the commune, but we are always also trying to work with the state regarding the reforming of uh, the education system for our children. That is a very difficult topic, it's a difficult issue, because the state, of course, has uh, guidelines for education for the people, but we want that education to be adapted. We are, for instance, opening more primary schools units in our commune. A primary school system which is better adapted, better suited to the conditions of the commune, our ideology, so we are trying to reproduce a, a new experience regarding the education of our children in the framework of the commune. Regarding the organization, we have, as I said, 22 communal councils. We have a communal parliament. We organize extraordinary and regular meetings. As Chavez proposed, we have two spokespersons per communal council, a the principal and the deputy. These spokespersons are elected by their communal council. These two people then take their proposals to the communal parliament. Their political, social suggestions, grievances, and in the parliament, we debate all these issues. The communal bank representatives also take part in these debates. The, this year, based on the effort to organize better the production, we have created a new organ with a, a number of uh, communal councils in order to organize the production and also to organize the bank. The bank has to take care of the different uh, crops, in the case of black beans, maize, coffee. The bank is responsible for investing in the different uh, production processes, production of vegetables, pulses, also in pig raising, the raising of chicken. We are moving forward in order to consolidate production at all levels, agricultural, livestock, etc. So far, we have been able to gather $30,000 to purchase inputs, to improve machineries. We have given loans for uh, pig production, hog production, pork. 
uh, for chicken raising and so on. We have lost them again. All the production that we generate We are losing them. We are not getting the sound. I'm sorry, we are not getting them. Well, as we said at the outset, this is broadcast live from Del Maizal commune, and uh, it is a, a rural area, and giving the different sanctions um, um, are affect us, and the services are not as good as they should. They are having problems with the, the connection. They are trying to change the equipment to try to improve the connection. I just wanted to, while they fix their connection issues, well, this Maizal commune has been a pioneer in the commune formation, but also in the land rescue process. El Maizal, as our friends were saying, was the result of the grabbing of uh, land of one of the states with the highest production level. Lara State has been one of the, the most important vegetable producers in the uh, country. Most of what we eat in Venezuela, in terms of vegetable, come from that uh, state. And Maizal has been producing maize, corn, as a key item for this commune. In Venezuela, one of the struggles of the last 20 years has been the rescue of land. 20 years ago, at the outset of the revolution in 2002, Chavez launched the motto of uh, war against the land, big landowners. And the idea, is, the idea was to recover the idle land. That is why our friends were mentioning the motto of Ezequiel Zamora, who said that we had to have land in order to have free men. Today we say free men and women, of course. So he launched the struggle to recover the land. And in 2002, there was a coup attempt in Venezuela. And the purpose of the two coup attempt was to stop, to halt land distribution. And El Maizal commune has been a clear expression of uh, this rescue process of uh, the land, of idle land in the framework of the work against uh, big land ownership. And today, the dispute for lands remains 
compañeros ya están en contra de, de continuar. Struggle, which is uh, still underway. Sí. We are going back to our friends from El Maizal. They have reconnected. So we continue with their presentation from El Maizal Commune. Well, as I was saying, there was some surplus in our production, so we were able to send food to Caracas, to Apure, and Suategui, Portuguesa. We have established a number of linkages with the rest of the country. So they realize that the commune is the future, is the hope to build socialism. And uh, there are also financial surpluses in the bank. And we invest those surpluses in the community to improve the infrastructure we have built, uh, sport facilities, power distribution system, health assistance, health aid. We have made a number of uh, things to help people in the communes and they, people see in the commune the sole hope to truly build socialism in Venezuela. The commune has benefited from assistance from the government and they have uh, earmarked resources for the popular organization systems. We have used those resources in strengthening the economy of our territory. This year from the economy center organ, we have uh, agreed to go to the grassroots, to family production units, to go to the households. For instance, 100 and 145 family production units have been created and, uh, and working. And that's been a big step forward, leap forward, because uh, we are integrating the households in the production process. And they have been financed by our bank, but they have also been financed with uh, state aid, state assistance. Therefore, we defend our government because it is true that there are contradictions. That given the imperial embargo, imperial attack, the constant harassment, we still remain firm in the principle of a commune or nothing. We have uh, succeeded in strengthening people's power from the bottom, bottom up, from the grassroots. Around the country, there is a struggle for water, water transport, power supply, etc. That's a struggle. But our struggle here in the communal myself is the struggle to protect the land, the land that should belong to those working the land. That's our struggle here in our rural territory. 
it is clear that uh, the struggle has not been easy. There are political issues regarding uh, the use of the land. There is a historical dispute over the control of the land. We need to still conquest more power if we want to succeed. So we work with the council, the commune councils, but we also have a, we also have a program with the youth and with the children, with the kids, the children of our brothers and sisters who are active, involved in our commune, we work with the children from zero years until they decide to continue with us or, or do something else. So we accompany the children in their education process. Those little kids, they are Chavistas, they are in the womb, and uh, they are part of the commune youth. And we hope that someday they will become the leaders of this process. So we are strengthening the formation and the organization of children, youth, men, and women in all areas, because this is the only way we can be strong. We, know, we need to be mindful of our role in strengthening the commune. There are many contradictions. There are many disputes within our ranks. But Chavez said, there will always be resistance to change. And we have to fight and overcome the resistance to change. It is not easy to transform the model that we had in the past. That is never easy. This is a historical struggle. People have died in the effort to transform our society. So we need to pay tribute to those who left their lives and devoted their lives to this struggle. And we are willing, we are willing to devote our lives and give our life to succeed. And we will never go back. There is no, no turning back. Here in the in my cell, we have the Bolivarian blood. And Chavez left us this heritage, this legacy. We feel the spirit of Chavez in our struggle in El Maizal, our source of inspiration. Therefore, we continue organizing the people all over our territory to increase awareness on the need to strengthen our commune. We started with the commune councils. From there, we went to the communes, and now we are organizing the communal city, a higher level of decision-making across setting effort to share struggle, to share resources, to share efforts. It's a synergy of efforts at the grassroots to attain self-government of our communal city. But it has to be consolidated. But uh, we are adamant in the effort in uniting the various cells that already exist in order to uh, go uh, ahead in our effort to create the community. So I give the floor to Hernan now. Thank you very much to our brothers and sisters from El Maizal. Thank you so much 
for giving us an overview of the uh, history of El Maizal. Thank you for the technical effort to make this uh, presentation possible. We are receiving already questions from people around the world connected, connected to this video conference. From China, from Latin America, they are from Europe, there are questions on this experience. People greeting and uh, commenting on this experience. Before um, answering the questions, you have uh, the communal corridor, and they have been pioneers in this corridor, communal corridor that goes beyond the commune. Could you please elaborate on this communal corridor, how it works, and the purpose? And uh, tell us about the relation between the parliament and the commune. And the third question, which is important, the territorial defense and the popular militia. How have you organized for the defense of the territory through the territorial militia? So you can keep on asking your questions, but uh, in the meantime, I'd like to ask our friends to very quickly uh, elaborate on these three topics that I have raised. Well, regarding the communal corridor, Well, this has been done through very simple things. We started with the communes that are in Lara and Portuguesa states, in the Paravicino parish. First, we started a promotion process to build communes. We had the Maizal commune, and from there, we deployed our efforts towards the neighboring communes, neighboring council communes. And there, we took land. And those people working on those lands, they joined us in our effort to expand the project. Since we are so much concerned in the, in the existence of idle land, we activated production, we organized the people in this territorial area, and we insisted on the need to create what we call the communal city or the communal corridor. They need to create the parliament for us to discuss, debate, discuss production distribution, discuss the problems and to find solutions to the problems, to improve uh, services. And there is, of course, a dispute because the state, which has the powers on service 
provision. Well, there have been some disputes with the with the state in order for it to provide the appropriate services. And uh, the, the idea is that the also the economic uh, council took part in each commune. We have a, an economic council, and they also participate in the level of uh, communal production. Well, here we talk about uh, communal cities, but we can also call them communal corridors. The, the structure is not totally defined. It is underway. It is in progress. We are, for, for instance, we need to deal with the services, garbage, road system improvement, schools, high schools, health centers. We are addressing all those issues. For instance, we have uh, invested in projects uh, to improve service provision so we can pro improve the services in the community. And the spokespersons of the different communes should participate actively in this process Proving the services in our territory. And they have to be active in their support. They cannot remain in a theoretical position. Regarding the communal parliament and its relation with the commune is, as I explained already, we have spokespersons from each commune, commun communal council, elected by the grassroots, by the community, by the inhabitants of the different councils. Those people elected are the ones responsible for taking their proposals to the parliament to present projects, to present uh, ideas, ask questions, and so on. And there we debate all the issues regarding to production, organization, so many issues that are raised within the parliament. And then we also approve projects. The parliament can also earmark resources. Once the parliament meets, they go to councils in order to inform the outcome of the parliamentarian debate. We also, for instance, distribute the gas cylinders. All the policies agreed by the commune those policies are implemented through the commune members and also the militia, the commune, communal militia. It, it is clear that we have so many things to do that uh, we have devoted ourselves mainly to the production and the organization. But we also have the communal militia. We are also educating them. There are drills with the militia. But the militia also participate in the production process. Not only, they are not only responsible for the security aspect. They also work in distribution of food or in the census, etc. Well, 
Regarding the defense issue, we have the defense units deployed in the health centers, in the health units, in all those areas that are vulnerable points, such as the gas stations, health centers, during the harvest period, the militia members should safeguard the crop, the harvest. There are producers who are in active surveillance of the territory to protect our assets. We have also the formal militia, but we have also the anonymous producers who are also organized and they are there to defend our harvest, to, pro to protect our services, health care, education centers. The people are empowered. They, we have a network of uh, popular intelligence services. They are anonymous agents. No one knows what they're doing, but they are there to, to be watchful and to oversee the security and the defense of the territory. Thank you very much, Hernan. So, after these works, so after this explanation that gives us a general overview of the community and the different activities they are carrying out in terms of organization, production, and political coordination with other communities, such as the corridor initiative, the communal union, and uh, in terms of their political agenda. So thanks to all this overview, or from that overview that has been given, I would like now to focus on the different questions and comments that we have received. We have uh, many participants around the world, from Brazil, from Argentina, from Canada, from different countries that are, that are standing in solidarity with all of us who are saying, long live the communes, long live the commune. So I will ask Kitchen and Kade to help us with the questions that we have received in English and questions also that we have received from China. So back to you, Chen Shui. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we are very happy to have a speaker from uh, Amazon and uh, we visit uh, Venezuela as well. And we also involved in the rural reconstruction movement in China. So uh, we have a lot of uh, questions uh, from, from our side and also from the participants. Uh, the first one is about uh, the bank. Um, you, you mentioned the bank. So uh, is this a kind of uh, for, is a mon bank for money or uh, uh, how it was uh, formed? And also, uh, you also have any uh, seeds bank. So this is two kinds of banks. One is for uh, the cash or uh, for money, another is the seed. So uh, two kinds of bank, how you are formed. And the question two, uh, uh, we, we, we learned that uh, you launched the uh, communal union in this uh, in January this year. And how is it uh, doing now? Any process? Um, question three, and you mentioned about the contradiction within the communes, how you overcome the uh, difference and make the uh, decision making move. And question four, how about the uh, the land issue, because we know that you also uh, encounter the uh, land dispute, even you occupy the land. So um, uh, you, how can you deal with the um, bureaucracy and also the land law? I think it's a common uh, issues or common problem in Latin America when they did the, um, particularly did the uh, land uh, occupation. It also happens within the uh, Brazil. Like uh, there are many cases uh, in, um, um, 
uh, MST because many uh, peasants also have to uh, confront this kind of uh, land uh, dispute, even they uh, did the uh, land occupation. And the um, and then the uh, now we have the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. How your uh, uh, commute overcome this uh, problem? Um, um, the but the last question is uh is a simple one. Why your commute is named the uh, El Masao? Is this because of the uh, uh traditional uh, culture? Because uh, as far as we know, this is the uh, uh maize uh, worship, or uh, this kind of uh, culture. Is this a kind of indigenous culture? Or why you name your commune um, uh, has a um, uh, um, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jade. Eh, ahora, te, si tenemos algunas preguntas desde China, con el compañero Homa Chichion. I'd like now to know if we have questions from China. There is some uh, so, problem with the uh, Zhixiong. Maybe I um, speed, okay. speed out uh, his, his questions. Uh. He actually, his collects question from the uh, floor. Um, Xiang Liao Jie Xia, Wei Ding Lui La Se Chu Zhou Lang, Zai Dang Di, Gao Tong, Gao Tong Huo Peng Zhang Tiao Jian Xia, Se Chu Zhi Xu De Wen Ding Gong Zhuo Shi Xian, Yi Ji Wei Ding Lui La Se Chu Zhou Lang, Yu Zhong Guo Chen Shi Se Chu Zhi Li, Xian You Mo Shi De Yu Lue Dui Bi. Di Ao Tiao, Zhong Zhu Mao Dun, Zai Wei Ning Lui La Se. Second question. Wei Ning, Zhong Zhu Mao Dun. Racial, racial conflict in Venezuela. So racial um, conflict, how does it influence Venezuela's modern development? And what has been, been changed um, in uh, space and history? Desde distintos lugares, bueno, desde China, desde América Latina, these are questions from China, from Latin America. And uh, one of the questions is, you know, how many people are being fed thanks to the production of the Maisal commune? And uh, another question is, how are you going about the make a decision process despite of internal contradictions? How do you handle differences within the communes? Someone else asks, what about your relationship with the government? What can you tell us on that? And so they also ask, how can you adapt the school to the commune's needs. There are some questions about the bank. And they want to know if this is a bank who lends money, what, what funds are used in the money's operation. And there is also a question on the communal Unity. What have you been, what, what progress have you been making there? And someone else asks also about the Latin American struggles for the land, historical struggles against the land ownership. And uh, the question is how the Maisal community are dealt with the uh, the land and those disputes that are typically present. And uh, they all, there is another question on why do you name yourselves and myself commune? Does it have to do with the regional tradition and relationship with the corn? In China, there is a question on hyperinflation. 
how you are resisting the hyperinflation created by the imperialist attacks. And someone else asks on what wants to know, how are you dealing with modernity? How are you still, are you still practicing the traditional customs of the commune? And uh, one more question. How we can connect communal council, commune, and then corridor, communal corridor, corridors and communal cities, and how to integrate all these instances into the government practice. This has uh, this related to the political agenda also that has been deployed by El Maisal Commune. So these are some of the questions that have been asked by our audience. Here we also have the ingredients uh, from Costa Rica. Someone asked how many communes there are in Venezuela, according to official numbers. There are 3,000 Harvard communes. But the, in the first common meetings, we will have the Minister of People's Power and for Community. Más específico. She is going to give us more specific data regarding the national security and communes. Someone else asked. Something about last week. Last week, we had some difficulties in uploading our video in YouTube. And today, we uh, could finally publish, we could upload the video. So it is going to be available. It is already available. They have been working in some technical difficulties. And, uh, the video that we had published before had some sound problems, but uh, it's been solved. So now you have it available. So I will now ask our friends from Maizal to answer the questions. One of the first questions was about the, the, our production. We have our data and um, more than 50,000 people are receiving the production, an ongoing production. We are working on a daily basis. And uh, people can then go to our store and buy all the products that we have put available. So 50,000 people who are benefiting from what a myself community produces. Second question was, how have you dealt with the contradictions, internal contradictions? In order to tackle the issue, we, res we have resorted to dialogue. We have uh, we discussed our differences within the commune. We have a political council, and then proposals are made. We hold a debate, and uh, we reach uh, a consensus. And we, this is how we address our internal contradictions. We all work from the same principles, of course, and uh, we resort to those principles in order to address our problems. The political council 
take note of the contradictions. There are debates among the members of the council. And uh, well, we just discuss those issues and we try to solve them. And it's one from the um, directorate wants to participate, he serves as a mediator. Of course, there are several participations, the communes, the parties, the population. But in spite of the different perspectives, And in spite of the internal disputes, we always seek dialogue. So we have a proper instance, proper mechanisms to resolute, to reach a consensus. Another question was, how have you transformed the school model? How, how have you addressed the education model and the transformation of that model? Where we have a special team who is uh, devoted to updating the education. We go from our own reality and take into consideration our needs. For instance, if we have a school located in a rural zone, well, the education is going to be devised, taken into consideration the context in which uh, is immersed in school. So we use different approaches according to the situation. We have developed a number of initiatives and maybe in a future meeting we will present to you how we how we go about uh, the educational model based on the Robinsonian principles and our Robinsonian principles. Someone also asked about the Communes Bank. The bank was created at the same time that my cell commune was created. But in 2011, the bank had grew and had a new structure. We have administrators, vectors that are conducting regular works. The bank has a physical facility which is located and, uh, in our territory. And uh, besides the bank, there is also a, ma a magazine. And from the bank, we, or in the bank, we put into practice all the resources that come from the political council. And we provide resources to the social productive companies, to the family units, to different cooperatives who can resort to the bank for financing. How do we conduct such financing? Sometimes we provide input for the growing of uh, vegetables, coffee, beans, or we also provide uh, land. And those loans, so to speak, are paid back with production. Each producer receives technical advisory for the growing of livestock, cattle, etc. And also in the growing of uh, vegetables, beans, corn, and other items. So this is how the relationship with producer is uh, established. And the producer can also explain to the bank 
what his or her needs are, and uh, the proper provides uh, the the bank provides the proper answer. So this is how we coordinate all the production of the social productive companies. One percentage is going to be allocated to social investment, for instance, uh, healthcare services, political activities, um, also medical procedures that are not very expensive. And this is where we decide which project is going to be given the priority, how many resources we have available, and the Community bank has a responsibility of uh, explaining what has been done with all the resources. They are accountable for the resources that are given. We have uh, provided almost thirty thousand dollars from June and until uh, the present, and this uh, means that we have been able to provide uh, food uh, such as cheese. Uh, Power means, and we all have also been providing inputs, machinery that's going to be used in the, the growing of vegetables. We have delivered livestock, cattle, a number of items that we have delivered. And then the producer, for instance, the one who is growing uh, beans has to pay uh, with the beans and so on and so forth. So those products are then distributed through the communal um, magazines to the people. How the communal union has been working so far? Well, this year we started our activities with a lot of enthusiasm. We launched a refoundation campaign of our organization. We were working in five regions in the country, the central region, the eastern region, the Andes region, and the plain region. So we held several congresses, families, and each one of these regions with the participation of the vice-chair of the communities, mainly communes that have been working successfully in production and in organization terms. So we did this this year and uh, we started, as I said, as territorial assemblies. And then we were hit by the pandemic. The pandemic, with the pandemic, we kind of stopped some of our activities, but uh, right after we started reactivating ourselves and the midst of the pandemic without gas, without some essential goods, we decided to move on. And uh, we started giving instructions at the different territories and uh, with a lot of effort, we moved on. We conducted meetings, trainings. We started an exchange system because there are regions that where there are there, are, there is more production than others, and we then perfected that exchange system, and we organized a structure for, structure per region. So little by little, people have been incorporating themselves in these endeavors because our organization has been built little by little thanks to what is happening in real life and they incorporate themselves in the major effort. And this is how we have been moving forward. In spite of all difficulties, the pandemic, the scarcity of gas, hyperinflation, for people it's very difficult to have access to these items, to gas. 
And in spite of the cost of life in Venezuela, I think that in spite of all that, we were able to produce and to deliver our products to the population. We know that sometimes there are difficulties, difficulties, and uh, it is important to highlight that these are not just giveaways. This is an exchange, an exchange of production, and change one product in, in exchange of another. So this is a way in which we have been working in order to address the needs. We are working to precisely to go beyond the system that is oppressing us. So we have also a national directive that has been set up. We have other organizations for region. And so far we have accumulated important forces also in the economic, political, organizational spheres. This organization is a tool to attain our goals, our strategic goals, which is the construction of socialism. Communes is just a tool to that, to that end. Another question. What about the struggle, struggles for the land ownership? Well, we have made a, a lot of progress with Chavez with Chavez, it was very easy because Chavez sees the land and he gave us the land. So we had to Commander Chavez who helped us in the constitution of our in my cycle. And uh, what we say to our people is that we need to see the production and uh, the eastern side of our country we have seized 12,000 hectares. And these are productive hectares that have been seized from uh, the landowners who had idle lands. And in the past, they were protected by the states, but now oh, yeah. I think things are different and we have been able to recover those lands in different regions of our country here in the Lada State in different localities. We have been able to tease all these productive units. Today, there is a campaign This is not abstract. This is reality. We need to change the relationship. We do not need oligarchs. We do not need the private sector. We need to put in practice socialism to socialize the land. In this struggle, we have made a huge progress. In the midst of the pandemic, we have made a huge progress because we are imitating Zamora and the motto that uh, the land belongs to the one working the land. So we are determined in taking the land and distributing it to the people. We are so mad, so mad when we see the land handed by Chavez and then return to the private uh, owner. That's not acceptable. That's why we are so mad sometimes. So, the Maisal commune. There was a huge debate in 2009. There were many debates among us in a very uh, numerous assembly, people were so happy to be able to take active part in the debate. Because Chavez was there, 
People were thrilled to see him. The peasants, the farmers, we heard Chavez, we realized that he was the hope since 2009, in March the 5th. Chavez asked us, what's the name of the commune? And then someone stood up and said, Maizal, why? Because the people wanted to be called El Maizal, and Chavez agreed. Maizal comes from corn, maize, and uh, we produce a lot of maize here. Therefore, that's the, the, the reason of the name. And the other question posed, how we handle the issue of inflation. That is very rough, very difficult. However, we preserve the spirit of Chavez. We know that this crisis, this war, has led to many communes to disappear because they are unhappy with the situation. It is very difficult to preserve to preserve a commune because you need resources, you need products. That is why we have reinforced the production areas. We have strengthening our livestock. We have tried to industrialize our production. And that has been essential to strengthen our the members. In the past, the surplus was distributed and we, we devoted a lot of attention to the construction of uh, infrastructure. Now, since 2015, after a parliament debate, we have determined to give more attention to the production, productive area. Therefore, the surpluses are reinvested in more production. Of course, we are still affected by the huge inflation. We have tried to resort to various methods for us to continue producing. And through the technical school, we have been, we've been improving in technical courses of administration, management, in trying to find a way to, despite the inflation, we can continue producing and distributing. And, we, and for that, we need to be very, very efficient, trying to find new items to be produced, things that we didn't do in the past. We are now working, for instance, with the Brazil Landless Group, Landless Movement, but we are also working with Argentinian brothers and sisters. So that connection has enabled us to link with them and be more efficient, learning more. We are producing seed next year, for instance, we hope to be self-independent, uh, uh, sovereign in the production of uh, seeds because of the assistance of the MST from Brazil and brothers from Argentina. And other people, social movements, who are in solidarity with our project and they are helping us, giving us ideas and tools to overcome the crisis. Regarding cultural disputes and struggles, that is, that is very difficult. The cultural issue is crucial. We've been fighting that
And to overcome those conflicts, we need to educate, educate. Our youth has been the focus of our education efforts. We respect the diversities in the regions. We have a diverse culture that we need to respect. But we try to entertain good relations with uh, our people in our territory. But we need to understand there's been a trans culturalization process that uh, affected us in the past. And it is not easy to overcome. For instance, regarding the technology, they are so devoted to the social networks. We need to take them from there. We need to give them other ways to entertain themselves instead of uh, spending the whole day in the social networks. We need to teach the youngsters how to use the social networks. It is a tool. It is a tool for us to fulfill our goals. But uh, in order to help them to understand this, we need to educate, educate, educate. To find the ways to convey this message, because this is a cultural struggle, as Chavez said. The cultural element is key. So we resort to education to help our youngsters. In Venezuela, we have a diversity of cultures. So we need to learn to live in diversity and respect the diversity. Bueno, fíjense que eh, la otra pregunta es cómo se unen o sea, toda esa vocería, toda esa estructura en la institución. Bueno, on how the different spokespersons gathered within the parliament at the parliamentarian level. We have the people from the different communes, different councils. All those spokespersons they participate in the parliament debate, but they also participate in the economic council in the communal city. And everything comes from the grassroots. It is go it goes bottom up. We have the economic council. From city and in this fashion all of this has been the result of a process a process of constant ingenuity and innovation but we come from the small communes, neighborhoods, to the higher echelons of the decision-making process. And the idea is to move forward with all the strategic projects that we devise to attain the sole and major goal to build socialism at all levels. And decisions are made at the different levels according to the different uh, purposes. If we say that we're going to produce maize, we, we come from the small neighborhoods, the councils, to the commune, to the parliament to decide what to do with the production. 
And uh, as I said, we are already planning for next year harvest. El maizal has been an icon, an example of organization, efficiency, and production. And uh, we've been resisting and we have been linking the different uh, links of the chain in order to move forward. So this is the way which we link all the different uh, elements that conform this chain of decision. How do you link the communal councils to the higher echelons up to the national ex executive branch? Well, we have the spokespersons from the communal council. We have the executive uh, council, the planning council, the parliament, etc. That, that's part of the structure of the commune. And these same structures are found at the base of the communal city. We are moving forward towards the communal city. And then the communal unity or union, union. What is the idea there? That different cities join together and then they create a higher level of decision making level. So, as I mentioned, we have different levels up to the communal city, and then we hope to create regions. It's a sort of a democratic centrality or centralism from where we can make decisions affecting a whole region. Thank you very much. We were saying that this should be the source of a debate. Based on the questions, it is clear that we, are, we won't be able to answer all the questions. The questions will be answered all along the seminar in order for us to be able to grasp in depth the reality of Venezuela and that this debate should in the end have has an impact on the Venezuelan reality. I have three comments so we can uh, move forward to the next level, namely to watch the video from the Che Guevara commune. They sent us a video with the, the presentation. Based on what the brothers and sisters from the Maizal said, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them for their efforts. And in this, both in this platform and in YouTube, there have been constant debates. People are sending their greetings, their solidarity with the Maizal, and raising the motto of uh, commune or nothing. 
It's, it is through the communes that we can truly build socialism. In general, the intervention of the comrades, uh, we need to understand that the socialism in Venezuela has been built uh, overcoming contradictions. We cannot fool ourselves. Venezuela is a rentier and capitalist country. And the communes are just starting to generate a, a new way to produce, to connect. And El Maizal is just an example of these new spaces created. And the last seven years of the blockade have been very rough. And they are a clear demonstration that the process is moving forward. Despite the difficulties. And today there is a debate in the left on the contradictions. But without contradictions, there is no revolution. In our case, contradictions, in our case, is the, the symptom of revolution. It's because there are contradictions that we have revolution. We take up the contradictions. We try to overcome them. But contradictions are the very essence of uh, a revolution. And that will continue to be a debate. And OK, how can we deal with the contradiction? How can we build alternative to contradictions and still move forward? There is an initiative to build a new economic alternative. And uh, it has to do with what the comrades said. 50,000 people who are receiving the produce of the El Maizal. Someone asked if we had the number of people eating out of the produce of the El Maizal. Excellent question. In the next, next uh, session, the Minister of Commune responsible uh, from the government uh, from the state to give us more specific statistics. But this is part of the, the challenges that we have. The communal unity, union, fostered by our comrades, is to see, to assess how much is produced by the communes, how much is produced in collective, uh, in collective production, and how much is produced by small farmers, family farmers, etc. According to the FAO in the Latin American region, close to 70% of the food we eat come from family, uh, family agriculture. In Venezuela, we have the challenge to be able to give the statistics stating how much of the food we eat come from the communes and the communal cities. This is a debate, that's a topic that we need to deal with. Also, there were questions regarding the laws of the communal power and people's power. And it has to do with the communal bank. How does it work? Well, it has to do with the, a theoretical proposal and a legislative proposal. And the comrades gave us an example on how this has been implemented. Chavez talked about a new economic architecture. And in this sense, I recommend a document, a theoretical 
a lo presidente, where he spoke about new type of ownership, new production ways, etc. And he mentioned the communal bank, where from the community, we then have a, a different approach and another type of values and exchange and value generation and economy focused on the satisfaction of the, the value of use centered in the reproduction of life. And again, this has to do with a debate that is not over. It's a debate that is constant and permanent in our daily struggle. It has to do with how do we build this new architecture? Well, if you ask us, perhaps communal banks has to do perhaps has to do with the, our collective approach in Latin America to build alternative economies in Mexico, in Bolivia, in Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, but also in China. There are collective ways to proceed. Those are the seeds. Therefore, we need to be how we can devise this new model, the communal model, and the popular economy. And this session will occur later on, where we are going to discuss that topic. In the coming sessions, we will be able to elaborate on this topic. Now we have Felipe Valera from the Che Guevara Commune. He's going to explain how they work. They are located to the south of the Maracaibo Lake in the Zulia state between Zulia and uh, Merida, close to the Colombian border. And uh, it's been key in the production of food for the country. They produce uh, plantain, bananas, some maize. And in this regard, it has been traditionally an area of uh, large land ownership. Che Guevara Commune is an example of struggle in taking the land. Only two of the thousands of communes that exist, and uh, they are indeed among the more combative, but not, they are not the only ones. So if the video, we'd like to thank our brothers from El Maizal for their presentation. And next, we are going to watch the um, information provided by our friend Vanegas from the Che Guevara commune. My name is Felipe Vanegas. Felipe Vanegas is my name. I'm part of the socialist commune Che Guevara in the Merida state. How many people work here? We have 150 families. How did you start your process? Well, I have a very rich background. The call of Chavez to build communal councils. That was the origin. The people start to organize. So Chavez called us to create this 
communes. At the beginning, his proposal was not taken. But then, with the beginning of the communal councils, we started to build this process. We started, my family started with me and other grassroots leaders. So we started to educate people to understand this new process fostered, sponsored by Chavez. need to strengthen the basis. Did you take part in the organization from the start? Yes, we were, I was a young student. And I started to participate as a young student with my family and the neighbors. And the activities you conducted were only in the school or also you worked with the community? Well, the commune, the communal councils were working at the grassroots level. And uh, the idea initially was to build housing for the community. But there were also projects, youth projects, to organize the youth in both activities and education activities. So as students, you organize yourself within the community. Yes. We started to create a newspaper, a local newspaper. It was uh, an information tool where we informed about the different activities performed by the communities. Uh, how successful that paper was? Well, we were able to reach many sectors of the territory. So we, it was very useful as a communication tool. We there, we disclosed information on the coffee production, cocoa production. We've been very successful in working with the coffee growers, cocoa growers. We have various type of uh, coffee and cocoa of various qualities. in the different communities. In the various communities, San Isidro, San Jose, etc. We have been able to reach all the farmers in the various communities that we encompass. Well, the, there were some discussions on how the different small communes should be organized, if they should be grouped in two or three communes, etc. There were some attempts to create divisions 
However, in the end, people voted in favor of a uh, of the creation uh, voted in favor of the creation of a socialist commune encompassing all those councils these are people who are very rebellious and the, in the end they chose a, a larger unit Well, among the problems we used to have here are the road system. It is difficult for people to um, take their produce to the markets, to the urban areas, because of the lack of proper road systems. Therefore, Chavez helped us to build and rebuild our the communication ways. And that was uh, instrumental for us to be able to take our production to the markets. And uh, for many years, we've been able to maintain the uh, roads and the, the paths to be able to take our production and also to be able to communicate easier with the, the, the nearby uh, urban areas. Also, housing units were built. Many homes were built for the communities. The idea was to stimulate the people to stay here instead, instead of moving to the urban areas. The idea was to provide the conditions required for the people to thrive within the rural areas. And in this fashion, with the housing units, the better roads, people feel more comfortable in staying here and continue producing. dentro del Consejo Comunal se vinculan con estas expresiones productivas. Now, uh, do you think that uh, the majority of the members of the community are totally connected with the productive activities? Many of the people they are very active because they are cocoa growers, coffee growers. So they take part of the production to the cities and then the other part is distributed among the members of the commune, improving the living conditions of the people. We've been diversifying the processing of the co of the cocoa by producing uh, 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 better quality of uh, chocolate and uh, other type of uh, uh, items made up with chocolate, and that diversification has been very useful useful for the community. As a result of the blockade. Uh, our, our situation has been difficult. We have uh, been affected in various aspects, but our community has been able to respond to these attacks. Today, the state, because of uh, the reduction in income, and has been able to provide more assistance to the communes and to address the, the grievances of the people as it used to do in the past. So it is our responsibility to assist and help 
our uh, members, are the members of our community, to resolve the uh, economic and uh, health problems. Since the state today has not the means to come to the rescue of these people. So that's another important role of the community. What is the what is the situation of the cultural the cultural situation of the community? Well, most of these people live in the mountains. And uh, there they grow cocoa and uh, and coffee. And uh, but in this sector we also have some oil production. But uh, we need to understand that we cannot continue relying solely on oil to obtain a livelihood. We need to rescue our agricultural traditions. It is through our agricultural, traditional agricultural activities that we can preserve the spirit of the commune. And uh, we need to be profitable in, in our agricultural activity to help people to persevere in this uh, activity. Um, we focus mainly on family farming. And we need to help those families to increase production, to improve income, and uh, be able to better the coffee they are growing so they have a, a better and higher e income. However, in this region, the coffee culture is very strong. In this area, we have uh, different qualities of coffee. We have uh, the Robusta coffee between 200 and 100 meters. We have a, a quality of coffee, which is sometimes is bitter. It, it's not as good, but as a, at a higher level, we have the Arabica quality. And the Robusta production yield is very good, although that coffee is not as good as the Arabica coffee. We have a huge varieties of uh, coffees that we find in this area. The Araguané Festival, strains, various varieties developed in the country. And they can resist various types of pests. And we've been improving the technology in order to have a, a far more resisting seed and varieties. The organization has strengthened. In the past, in 2004, we had the cooperatives that existed. But since we have improved the fabric of uh, communes, and we have used our nursery, this nursery that we see here, we have uh, resorted to technologies to improve the production. We have the a greenhouse already to improve the scientific approach uh, to the grain. So it is clear 
that we need to 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 improve the technological approach and scientific approach in order to increase production, to increase outputs. Many families have uh, profited from this effort. Well, we have uh, hundreds of families in this area. They have uh, benefited from these efforts. So we, for instance, use this greenhouse and the nurseries to plant the small plants that then when they are strong enough um, and we certify the quality of the plant so they are distributed to the farmers. When did you build this uh, facilities well in 2015 in 2015 we started to build these facilities we started to find the building materials to build this facility we had the financial resources but then we need to resort to an engineer to help us with the knowledge. And we had to do it very quickly because of the inflation. So in 2015, we started with the construction. It's a self-construction process. We had the five brothers who were appointed to carry out this project of construction. So we started to work with the engineer that should advise us. And as I said, we had to do it very quickly because inflation was uh, eating up the resources. And the community also helped. We had the advice also of the elderly, people with experience. And in October 2016, we finished the works. And then that year, we started operating in, in 2016. almost four years, so four years since we started. The experience has been very, very enriching. And uh, we have been able to learn a lot. From this experience. Well, as I said before, the main produce around here is coffee, and we work on the whole network of uh, the coffee production, different steps, and we produce bags of uh, half a kilo, one kilo, and so on. Es que la marca se ha hecho en comuna. Sí, la marca se ha hecho en comuna. 
Eh, and we have a trademark that has been created by the commune and it's uh, traded under the trademark. We foster the idea of the construction of socialism based on the commune. That's our project. We participate in activities organized by the government, and then uh, after many debates, we have decided to create this uh, communal union. We are sorry, but uh, it is very difficult to understand what he's saying. There is the, the many deficiencies in the original. Well, as I said, we produce maize, coffee, cocoa, those are the main uh, items we produce. in the future is to create the communal state. That's the vision for the future. The construction of a communal state with autonomy and participation in the participatory democracy. To work with other productive communities and to create a fabric of organizations 
enabling the construction of a communal socialism. Are you in contact with foreign organizations? Yes. We are working with the MST from Brazil and establishing some alliances. And the idea is to work together to meet common ground. Do you think that we can make progress with socialism in the future in Venezuela? I think we need to move forward to be the a new model. Very well. Well, that was the video that was sent by Compañero Venegas. He is a spokesperson from the Che Guevara Commune, located at the Maracaibo Lake, the Sul Estate, one of the communes that is uh, very productive, which has uh, I'm gone to serious uh, disputes over the land and uh, disputes with the owners of uh, landowners. We apologize for all the technical difficulties. We know that uh, the sound wasn't very good, and uh, we are going to make efforts, uh, to doing more efforts to enhance uh, the sound and to share a video where we will be able to follow the whole um, content of the video. So once again, we apologize for that technical problem, but uh, I will now invite you to the Q&A questions. If you want to make comments, Please do so. We can close in, we could have a, a quick, quick and answer session. And um, Felipe has made some important comments. And we are taken into consideration also the comments made by the El Maizal uh, spokesperson. So I would ask uh, our friends in China if they have comments that would like to share with us. And um, then we will close with our friends from uh, my South. I actually, I feel very happy because uh, Philip is so young, we only um, 20 something. And then he is, becomes the uh, spokesperson of uh, the uh, Chikavala uh, commune. And she, he is so devoted and also into this kind of uh, um, rural regeneration. So um, I, I, because so we also involved in the rural reconstruction movement, and we also want uh, uh, more and more young people uh, get involved in this uh, movement and to find the hope in the rural uh, areas. But I think it is not so uh, easy because uh, uh, because um, quite a lot of people, particularly young people, are attracted to the uh, the city life and then to uh, very uh, modernized. 
uh, uh, lifestyle. So they uh, their dream is to become a um, uh, how I say uh, the uh, white color working at the office and um, uh, make a, a huge of uh, money. Uh, and then we now we introduce them or instruct them to a kind of very simple life, very productive life and work with the uh, person, work with the uh, working class. So this is also kind of a culture transformation. And uh, during this kind of process, how can we uh, uh, how you say, uh, get involved more and more young people in this uh, kind of alternative way of uh, pursuing an alternative life, alternative uh, uh, cultural value. So um, I, I also uh, want uh, our uh, comrade from uh, Elms, uh, Elm Basau commune, how can, uh, you, you mentioned about the youth uh, program, but uh, in terms of the kind, this kind of uh, cultural transformation, how can you put uh, into practice? And um, because uh, for the uh, um, last uh, seven years, we have organized South South Forum on sustainability. And uh, this coming uh, uh, forum, we will have uh, the eighth South South Forum. And then we are organized, try to organize a youth uh, uh, forum, South South, um, youth, South South Forum, particularly youth forum on sustainability. So um, we try to, um, and this kind of uh, uh, proposal. So we would like to uh, uh, invite uh, the uh, young, I mean the uh, young uh, generation from uh, commute, from Latin American commutes, and even from the, uh, through our uh, network, through the Asian and also the through uh, African. So uh, how can we, uh, uh, how can I say, propose uh, or uh, to um, develop a kind of a youth um, uh, uh, forum that uh, can involve more uh, young generation from Latin America, from Africa, and also from Asia. I think this kind uh, project is so uh, meaningful. So in uh, I try to grab this opportunity to um, propose, and then maybe in uh, next um, uh, forum we can try to uh, ex to do this kind of experiment, and also uh, in the um, future, as I mentioned to uh, discuss with uh, Haram, uh, we can also, uh, at now at the time, now we through this kind of virtual meeting, but maybe when the condition has some improvement, we can have uh, uh, in, uh, I mean, the face-to-face uh, the -face, uh, exchange program. I think this kind of uh, body, um, uh, you can have, can feel the high man's the very concrete uh, feeling, particularly because based on my experience, how we I understand because I I have opportunities to uh, to go to to have some field trip and to make uh, friends with real people, not through this kind of uh, uh, virtual meeting. I think this is only the first step. The next step, or uh, in future, we should uh, I mean the uh, provide more condition to facilitate the uh, future exchanges, have have more face-to-face -face, um, uh, exchange program. So, um, but uh, now at that time, uh, we can uh, think about this kind of uh, tri-continental um, exchange program for youth um, uh, forum. I would just like to mention some of the comments that have been posted here in the chat. Many questions have to do with the youth, the youth. And I will ask our friends uh, from El Maizal to elaborate um, on that. And uh, one question is, why do you think youth do not want to live in the, in the rural areas? Why do you believe uh, the youth wants to live in the cities or have an in high income with cultural principles that are very are distant from the, our own customs and culture. This leads to a cultural transformation that is necessary. This is what Jin Sun was saying. How in the communes do we envisage a cultural transformation process? Felipe said, that, well, he is 24 years old, he is quite young, you're in an Baisal, you are pretty young people as well. 
So one of the questions is related to the cultural transformation and tackling the youth expectations. And they said that they had been developing, Jinsu said that they had been fostering the South-South uh, uh, meetings. This year they held the seventh South-South current, but that they are organizing uh, the eighth South-South uh, forum. And she proposes that this forum be transformed in a tricontinental platform which will gather our youth from Latin America, Africa, and Asia. So this is one proposal. And it's quite interesting because we need to think about the exchanges that are necessary. Uh, and once uh, the pandemic will be over, we'll then go back to person-to-person -person exchanges and not only virtual meetings. And um, I would also like to say that, yes, the work that is being done with the youth is very meaningful. From the university, global university, the global university for sustainability, the regional alliance for Asia and other movements. What we have been doing is a, a meaningful work in terms of transformation of those uh, values. For us, the face-to-face -face exchange allows for difficult, for different relationships. And this seminar is just an example of that exchange. Last year, I was invited to, to the experiences of rural construction in China. And then some of them came to Venezuela, delegation came to Venezuela, and they had the opportunity to visit different initiatives here in Barinas, for instance. They went to schools, they went to the to some uh, poor neighborhoods in Caracas. They went to the different communes. They visited the settlers' movement. So we have exchanged, and it is important to continue such exchange, not only in terms the exchange of food, but also exchange of medicines. When they came here, we talked about the importance of resorting to tradition, not only traditional medicine, but also um, Chinese uh, um, medicine in order to treat uh, illnesses and uh, condition disease, because right now we cannot buy some medicines on the market. So it'll be interesting to resort to the Chinese uh, legendary knowledge in medicine. So these are some comments that I wanted to make in closing uh, before I give uh, the floor to our friends uh, from El Mais. Thank you for the opportunity to voice our experience. If we do not internationalize this struggle, our efforts would be in vain. And many of the questions are related to our youth, right? How to make this transformation and how to incorporate the youth from our different regions? Well, the interests, the struggles are the same. We need to use the ITCs and technological mechanisms. But so we have to go to the field as well. And I believe that the international brigades that we have received have yielded very positive results. We had the visit of the international brigade from Brazil that came to Venezuela. And we had the opportunity to learn how they have been organizing their work And we had also the opportunity to go to their country and to see by ourselves how they are working. So they are learning from us and we are learning from them. They are learning how to have organized communes. So I believe that these grassroots organizations need to unite their forces so that we can construct a roadmap 
and to, to find mechanisms to respond to all the difficulties and the hardships. So I believe that uh, we need to go to the different territories with specific tasks to address our youth and to convey the message. This is what we have been doing nationwide. We have different brigades that go to different localities in the different Venezuelan regions. We have, for instance, a brigade in Merida and another in El Maizal. So thanks to all this fruitful exchange and uh, with a program that we have adopted of uh, voicing our initiatives. This is how we have been working. So internationally, I think that we could do the same. People need, need to understand that they have also to take the means of production. That's the main issue. And we learned from Chavez that you have to work on the field and you need to voice those initiatives. If we limited limit ourselves to our small spaces we will be we, we will not be doing what we have to do one commune by itself it's not strong enough to resist the, the, the attack of a whole empire so we need to get together to work together hand in hand and this is what we have been doing for the different brigades that we have set up here and to complement what our friend has just said, in our work with the youth, we have had very positive results. Given the country's situation, we have provided spaces for training, training on the field, and that has made possible a political training in El Maizal commune. We have different bodies who have uh, taken up the responsibilities of, of tackling the youth issues and uh, using several methods. We have found the way to incorporate the youth participation in our activities. So this is just one of the proposals that we have been doing here, but this has been replicated also in the whole country. The idea to relaunch the youth's work so that we can move forward and that we can make our organizations develop and grow constantly. So, Of course, all these processes are guided and uh, there are different mechanisms through which we provide consultancy to the different bodies that are set up. Thank you very much. I think that you have done an excellent job because you, first you have been victorious in fighting against the connection problems but you have been successful also in breaking the media siege, right? This is very important, what we are doing here, because we are allowing others to have a look to the, at the real Venezuela, the Venezuela that is being built from the communes, from farmers, from the people. You have given us a very wide perspective of uh, the commune process in Venezuela, Felipe Varelas, he tried to convey the same message in his video. We had some difficulties, but anyway, we will try to improve that. We would like to thank the Che Guevara commune, the Maisal commune. And just in closing, I would like to say that the youth role is a central role, and we need to incorporate this element in our debate, that the debate that we're going to have in the next meetings. Yeah, they said, that we needed to create other spaces for the exchange 
And in that sense, we have been working also with the brigades in Venezuela. We have had different visits from uh, the Che Guevara brigade. We have received young people from different countries so that they can see by themselves what communes are about. They participate in the assemblies. They work with us. They understand the whole process thanks to this close contact. This is what we did also with the delegation from China that came at the beginning of the year. I think that the strengths of uh, the youth brigades are a key element to our initiatives and to our struggle. I would like to invite you to the next uh, meeting. Today, oh, let me tell you that today we had uh, uh, almost 65 participants through the Zoom platform and uh, through YouTube. Other 20 people were following us. And in China, there were on streaming about 2,300 people more. So we will continue with this seminar of the Venezuela in struggle. We invite you to the next meeting where we'll be addressing the issue of the rural communes and the building of uh, rural corridors, construction of communal cities. And next week, we will talk about the group, the revolutionary group Bolivar y Zamora. They have been working in the communal initiatives for years. They were the pioneers of the building of uh, certain cities like the Simon Bolivar communal city. So we will get familiar with their, their work, their experience, and next week we will also see some of the experience in the southern part of our country where we have been building indigenous population communes which apply and which apply another scheme so to speak not what the same ones apply in the urban and rural communes but the indigenous populations commune it is possible also that we will have uh, the minister for communes and social movements. She is uh, someone who comes from the communes. She worked with communes, so she is trying to keep us her perspective on that. And we will share, of course, with you economic um, topics, food sovereignty production, the bank, communes, bank. And Carolina has insisted in knowing what part of the production that is consumed today in Venezuela comes from the communes. So thank you very much. I would like to thank our heroic team of interpreters. I would like to thank uh, Joan, Alice, Janine, Claudia Acevedo, Maria Quijada, who have been working very hard in order to guarantee the communication of this seminar that can be translated in English and Mandarin and Spanish. And I would like to thank our friends from Alba TV. We are broadcasting through streaming through the Alba TV channel. And from there, they go to Facebook and YouTube, thanks to the platform Alba Movimiento. So thank you very much. See you next week. Commune or nothing.